this is the second attempt at this film. Uh, the first one I tried to do yesterday, but the light was really all over the place and you couldn't see much. And then I realized I'd actually cut my finger and there was blood everywhere. So I, um, I decided to quickly redo this, but I've sorted out the rear lamps or how I think I'm going to do the rear lamps. Um, I did look at various ways of doing this. So one of the ways was to build a, a little flat bracket that sat on the back of the lamp here and held it against the, the valance panels. That didn't really look right. It looked a bit sort of trailerish. Um, it, it just wasn't a very nice look. And I also played around with doing that, but then having a sort of fairing over the lamp back into the into either the guard or the valance part. Um, but that didn't really look correct either because it looked a bit too chunky. And I think it's to do with the way the the back of the car is kind of quite pointy. Um, having those huge lamps on there and the fairings just it just looked too big. Um, kind of a bit like the rear guards on some of those 70s Volkswagens. Uh, just the lamp cluster looked too too chunky for the back of the car. The other thing I was considering was a sort of stalk coming out of the body with the lamp mounted on it. So it would sort of stick out here with the lamp there. And that didn't really look right either. Um, it just didn't really suit the car. But I was discussing it with my girlfriend and she suggested, well, why don't you do a stalk that comes up from the bottom? And that's actually worked out reasonably well. I was getting excited that I'd be able to get my, my little tube bender out again and play with that. But looking through my junk box, I actually found some pieces of tube that I'd already bent, just as test pieces. And I was able to cut up one of those and reuse it. And I just made these little little brackets um, just out of a piece of tubing and a piece of flat across the back and a circular piece. These I made from two millimeter steel. I drilled it out with a hole saw and then just tidied them up on the lathe and, and trimmed them down. At the moment, this black thing in here is actually a magnet. These are magnets that I, I harvested out of dead microwave ovens out of the magnetrons. They're very useful, they're very strong. And the reason I've got them here at the moment is so that I can play around with the positioning of the lamp. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky, trying to figure out exactly where these lamps need to go. And I have looked at lots of other 30s style cars to figure out how they did it. And in a lot of cases they didn't have lamps or they had very small lamps. Uh, sometimes they were mounted quite low down. I think Morgan's had them low down near the back of the car, just little tiny lamps. Um, other Austins, I can't remember if it's the the Nippies or the Speedies, which have a, a more rounded back. Um, often a lot of these 30s cars would have a, a flat number plate holder and a lamp either side of that, so they were, they were narrow and quite close together. Uh, one of the Austins actually has it mounted up here. There's a sort of a board across here with, with lamps either side. Looking at mine, there are, there are various places I could put these. Um, and this is where the magnets help, so I can um, take those off and position the lamps wherever I like. Uh, they definitely look too chunky on, on the actual guards themselves, so they do need to come inboard a bit, which I know concerns a friend of mine because he thinks the, the lamps should be as far to the corners of the car as possible which, from a safety point of view, absolutely makes sense. But from a 1930s car point of view, they, a lot of them weren't like that. So I am going to have reflectors on the, um, on the corners of the guards here somehow. I'll, I'll mount a little reflector. Uh, that may need a little fairing, I'm not sure. But basically with these magnets, I can play around with where exactly these lamps need to go. So... Obviously, you can change the height up and down. You can change where they sit. Um, unfortunately, I, I don't have the garage door open today because it's really windy. But yesterday, I played around with moving the lamps around, just trying to see where they looked correct. And what I ended up with in the, 
in the end, after after many combinations, was somewhere kind of in the middle of the valance panel, and from the back, when you're standing away from the car, visibly about halfway up this height. It's a bit hard to explain. It's it's not halfway up by measurement. It's it's halfway up by what looked correct from a distance. So the lamps end up somewhere like that. Uh, without the magnets here, obviously these are going to sit a bit closer in. So that's where I'm at at the moment. I'm just still positioning them, leaving them there for a while, walking away from the car, opening the garage door when I go out to go and check if there's any any letters being delivered. Um, and then I come back and have a look at it from a distance to see what looks right. And it, it's going to be somewhere around there. Um, obviously you have to play to get them balanced. The good thing about these mountings is uh, this little boss here is actually where the cable comes out. So I can run the cables inside the tube and underneath here through a, a grommeted hole into the, into the back of the boot. So the cabling is all hidden. And I think what I'll do is replace these screws here with longer ones. And I'll use little, probably stainless steel standoffs in here to hide the threads. And probably sort of dome nuts or acorn nuts on the end here just to make it look tidy. I did consider using a fatter tube, although I don't have any. And then this bracket could actually sit flat on the back of the lamp. But... I kind of like how they're, they're sort of stood off at the moment. Um, I don't know why, I, I just like the look of that. Maybe it would look neater if this was bolted hard onto the lamp, but I think it looks okay how it is. I can always change them later. The front side lamps have been reassembled with the little gasket, uh, little gaskets that I laser cut, and they're, they're bolted in there now. Um, one thing I may do for the cabling, this will be for the headlight cabling as well, is I have this sort of armoured cable, which I think is really a little bit more 1920s, um, although I suspect 1930s cars would have used this kind of stuff as well. And just to make the cables neat, underneath here, I may run the, the cabling inside this stuff. Um, I've already made the hole and the grommet for where the, the thing goes in through the valance panel there but if I put the cabling inside this it just keeps it all nice and neat and tidy and it's actually going to be tucked up behind the bracket anyway so you'll, you'll barely see it but I think that'll keep it all nice and neat and you won't see any visible loose wiring so this actually came from uh, Weta Workshop when I was there I, I rescued it out of the rubbish bin um, because this came off a a broken DRO scale on, on the mill. So like my mill there with its little DRO, the cabling for those, for the sensors for those, comes usually with this kind of stuff. So I just rescued it and figured I can reuse that one day. It's very windy and starting to rain, but something like that. I don't know. Oh, I've been watching too much Vice Garage, I think. But... I think that's getting fairly close. This shows one of the reasons I bought this little desktop laser cutter it was something I did during during the lockdown here I ordered it from China and um, have been slowly improving it and rebuilding it uh, changing all the mountings to aluminium rather than the acrylic that came with it uh, I still need to replace the the feet and this is all going to be mounted on a, a nice piece of MDF I'm going to make a proper housing for it and it'll live out in the garage because you do get some fumes off it when you're when you're laser cutting things because obviously it's burning so i haven't done anything about cable management yet obviously this is all over the place 
what I'm doing here is the little side lights on the on the Austin they have these these little um, bezels and then the lamp and there was actually a sort of gasket that went in between those so what I want to do is reproduce that out of some of this this black brownish foam and the laser is perfect for cutting this sort of stuff so all I did is drew up the design in Fusion 360 and then imported it into the the Lightburn software that I'm using here and the laser is now set up ready to cut it this is just a red laser diode that I have on here this isn't the laser that actually cuts but I use this to see where the laser is actually going to cut you can turn on the laser the cutting laser to low power to actually see where it is but I find this is easier and there's an option in here when you've got everything set up where you can hit a button and it traces out the pattern that the laser is going to follow so now I know this is in the right position and this is all set up to cut um, I have my little safety glasses here which turn everything green but it's probably worth wearing and if we start this off so that's now the laser cutting through the foam very slowly so laser cutting is kind of a, a there are different parameters you can change you can change how fast the laser moves you can change the power of the laser and you also control the number of passes and that kind of thing what I found with this foam especially because it melts so easily is it works better to do more passes at a slower speed and a lower laser power than trying to do it quickly at high power if you try to do it quickly at high power it just tends to to leave a bigger kerf uh, the size of the cut is much wider so I want a fairly narrow cut here because the gasket ends up being fairly fairly thin fairly narrow um, so that's going to go ahead and cut but this is the one I did earlier and it's, it's just a very thin ring off that foam and the lens just kind of fits in there and then once that that lamp housing is all screwed back together that'll provide the seal around the front of the the uh, the glass there so I'll leave this one going and then I'll reassemble those lamps <laughs> 